Is this way of the unmastered monk subclass overpowered? If so, by how much? My DM is usually very opposed to homebrew, and I can understand why, seeing as a lot of homebrews are ridiculous, but from a flavor and mechanics standpoint, this is exactly what I'm looking for. I've thought of combining classes for our game, but everything I've asked has either been ignored or shut down. I'm not trying to outshine other players or do everything, I just want to feel like Yojimbo. I am currently a Kensei monk working towards Battlemaster, but I won't be online until 9. The subclass in question is below, with most of the non-mechanical text abridged for brevity. Way of the Unmastered Monk tread down the sword starting when you choose this this tradition at third level, you gain proficiency with with two additional one-handed or versatile weapons of your choice, and can use these weapons as monk weapons with your martial arts class feature. In addition, when you successfully hit a creature with a monk weapon, but not an unarmed strike, you can spend one key point to impose one of the following effects. It must succeed on a strength saving throw or be disarmed. It must succeed on a constitution saving throw or receive disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls for two rounds. It must succeed on a charisma saving throw or be subject to the effects of Hunter's Mark. Spell for five rounds, on which you do not need to concentrate. Waiting for the initiative at sixth level, you seize the initiative from the enemy on a failed strike. When an enemy's attack misses, you can spend one key point as a reaction to make an attack with a monk weapon. If you took the dodge action this turn, you may instead use your reaction to make an attack with a monk weapon under these circumstances at no cost. No master, no name beginning at 11th level, you can't be unwillingly recognized unless a creature uses its action to inspect your appearance in detail. The creature must succeed on an intelligence investigation check against your key save DC. You can spend a key point to increase the difficulty of this check by 5 as a reaction to this check. In addition, you can't be the subject of divination spells and can't be perceived by magical senses unless the caster has a piece of your body or a highly personal possession, such as a piece of well-worn jewelry or a childhood treasure. These items no longer modify your saving throw against these effects, but are instead necessary to cast the spell at all. One strike, one kill starting at 17th level, when you successfully hit with a monk weapon during an attack action, you may spend three key points to deal an additional 5d10 damage. If this damage reduces the target to zero hit points, you may make an extra attack this turn as part of your attack action. Source. Hashtag this subclass is riddled with problems and is too strong. This homebrew has a lot of problems that aren't really things you'd expect to see in an official class, and several of them are a lot stronger than what you could realistically expect to get. Save versus two rounds of disadvantage is really weird. These kinds of effects tend to be the next attack, or the next round, not two rounds, and especially not two rounds without getting a save to end it early. It mirrors the poison condition to an extent, but weirder. Hunter's Mark. For five rounds without concentration is a bad idea. Not only is it needlessly stepping on the ranger class's turf, but it is another arbitrary number of rounds effect. Waiting for the initiative kind of steps on the battle master fighter's toes. This class essentially has the repost maneuver, and if you dodge, it doesn't even cost you any key. It's not as big a deal as the later features, but it's yet another I do what you do, but better feature in this class. In addition, the key cost if you aren't dodging is a tad weird. For a bonus action and a key point, you could be dodging an attack for free, so unless you really needed that bonus action, that's going to be the superior bang for your buck. No master, no name is absurd. Assassin rogues can spend 7 days and a bunch of gold to create an elaborate cover at level 9, and can spend 3 hours at level 13 to convincingly copy somebody. This class just tosses that all out of the window and makes you permanently untrackable and unrecognizable unless people succeed in taking an action to even try to recognize you, and only being able to do so by succeeding against a saving throw that you already wanted to maximize anyways. There is no reason why a level 11 monk ability should invalidate entire classes and counter entire schools of magic so effectively. One strike, one kill is another weird attempt to make the assassin rogue feel worse about itself. Assassins, if they can successfully surprise somebody, can deal double damage if the target fails a con saving throw. This will add roughly 10d6 extra damage to their attack. This subclass, instead, gets to add 5d10 extra damage, without having to surprise, without allowing a saving throw, at the cost of 3 key points. That's 5 times per short rest at level 17. At level 20, that becomes once per fight for free because of the level 20 feature giving you 4 key points. 
and it isn't even limited per round, you could hit twice in a round and deal an extra 10d10 damage. And then it also allows an extra weapon attack if you kill somebody, which will allow you to also use this feature again? That is absurd. I allow balanced homebrew at my table, and I would never even vaguely consider allowing this subclass. It's far too strong and does basically everything the assassin does, but better. I also don't feel like having to track weird X rounds effects that aren't based on concentration.